months ahead of time of my wound, the thalamus picks that up, the thalamus picks up the nuances of the partner. And so we're, we can predict each other. Judy can say something to somebody else and say, well, I could, I could get Paul to react. And she could because she knows me after 45, 47 years of knowing me, I'm pretty predictable. This second time around, it sure changed in, in predictability after I started my healing and we remarried 21 years ago, especially in the, early, in the early years of our first marriage. You talk about predictability, it was there. So what happens is we're conditioned to that behavior. Then we go into what's called anticipatory anxiety. Fear of heightened anxiety and arousal. Fear of being mentally and emotionally out of control or disorganized. A fear of disorganization. I mean, it becomes a piece of us. I've got to be organized. I have to have everything in place. I have to be perfect. I have to perform. I have to do all these things or I'm out of control. A fear of reacting abnormally or creating a scene or being inappropriate or being abusive or always feeling the and always feeling the need to control people, situations and circumstances. And this really creates depression. Tremendous amounts of depression. Then the avoidance is the next stage of people, places, and things associated with the trauma. So what happens with the couple, sometimes it's, e if you don't have the knowledge of what you're dealing with, it's easier to walk away than it is to know it's going to happen again. The way of least resistance, it's easier to walk away. And so that's what I did with Judy. I walked away. I just walked out of her life. I don't know how many times. And finally, permanently. So we avoid people, places, and things associated with trauma. Or even the perception of trauma. Going back to the anticipatory anxiety. The perception of trauma. So we try to avoid stress, intimacy, and other people. We try to escape. And this, for a short period of time, provides a false perception of relief and safety. So I can isolate. I'm alone. And I get a little peace of mind. And that feels like safety to me, but it isn't. Because what happens is being trying to control the situation, circumstances, and other people, we go into self-doubt and self-criticism, which even increases depression. I should be able to handle this. Only crazy people are this anxious and fearful. Why can't I be normal? I must be crazy. I'm never going to get over it. I'm a hopeless case. Flawed and defective. Dirty, damaged, and different. I'm a failure as a parent, a partner, a worker. I am a failure. So that sets us up now for more avoidance and more isolation. If I get too stressed, I may lose my mind or my temper. Got to hide. And here's the biggie. I can't let anyone know how scared and weak I feel. And that's where being passive-aggressive comes in. As I feel weak and I've been wimpy and I haven't been able to make a decision and I haven't resolved this conflict. So I am defective. So now I'm going to lash out and I'm going to go aggressive. And then that pushes everybody back and gives you a little more emotional space until we get into the next box. It creates interpersonal and provocational problems. We get into self-abuse. And this is something that I work with a lot. Uh, with both men and women, we get in the self-abuse means that you can get into cutting and piercing and tattooing and uh, a deprivation of sleep and not eating or whatever the case may be or overeating, anorexia, bulimia. All this can, can, can come in at this point. Then the abuse of family, uh, addictions. We use escape mechanisms. We start uh, in our job uh, missing work, so we have employee absenteeism, and it just spirals down. And then what happens is more avoidance and more isolation, trying to get away from all reality, even trying to get away from perceptions. We're trying to avoid everything, which produces more stress at home and at work. We avoid more, uh, more anxiety, fear of loss, economic anxieties, loneliness, loss of control issues, and many times we allow ourselves to be re-victimized. And for a perpetrator, this is when he will perpetrate again and abuse either himself, his wife, family, uh, whatever. But the aggression comes out, and I have to bleed it off. The adrenaline uh, says that I've, I've got too much and I've got to act out on this. And so the victim gets re-victimized, and sometimes a perpetrator gets victimized, 
and then the perpetrator starts battering and emotionally abusing and acting out again and then we lose the adrenaline go into the honeymoon stage again and then we go back and live in this circle of uh, the raised tripwire hyper arousive intrusive recall creating an adrenaline feed and then we numb passive aggressive withdrawal denial and repression and we stay again in that circle we never resolve we never relax we stay in that circle it's like running around a corral full speed until the gates open and you can start blowing off the end of the race.